Good morning. This is objective two. We are going to multiply and divide rational expressions. Can anyone remind me of what the word rational means? Rational means fractions. All right, so let's just get to it. So in Algebra 2, I taught you a little saying for this. How are we going to simplify this? We're going to factor, we're going to cancel, we're going to smush. Factor, cancel, smush. Factor what we can, cancel what we can, and then smush it all together. So if I'm looking at this, the only thing that I see that can factor is this trinomial in the denominator. And a trinomial factors into two binomials, so this will be y and y, and I'm thinking minus 3 plus 2, because negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, and when you add, you get negative 1. And then we're going to cancel what we can. So what can cancel? Y minus 3's. What else can cancel? Your y's. So, I think that's it. And when we smush it all together, we're going to have 4 times the quantity of y plus 4, all divided by y plus 2. And you can't cancel those y's because they are protected inside the binomials. So, here would be your final answer. Okay, we go to example number 2. Here we go. Factor, cancel, smush. Now, a couple little things speak to me on this. One of them is this 5 minus b. What's different about that? It should look backwards. Normally, we see b minus 5 instead of 5 minus b. So, I don't know that I will need to do anything with that yet. Um, let me go ahead and factor the numerator. Um, so, I'm going to factor the numerator by GCF. What can I take out? I can take out a AB. When I factor out an AB, I'm going to be left with B minus 5. All divided by 5 plus B times 5 minus b. Now, our motto is factor, cancel, smush. Here's my question. Can the b minus 5, these two right here, whoops, excuse me. Can the, get a different color. It's got kind of purple. There we go. Can the b minus 5 and the 5 minus b, can those cancel? And they can't because this is a negative 5 on top. This is a positive 5 in the bottom. This is a positive B on top. This is a negative B on the bottom. So the signs are backwards. So recalling our skills from Algebra 2, how can we get these to cancel? What we're going to do is we're going to factor out a negative 1 from one of them. And so I'm going to factor a negative 1 from this guy right here. So... I'm going to leave the top the same, b minus 5. On the bottom, I'm going to take a negative 1 on the very, very outside. And I'm going to leave this guy the same, 5 plus b. And if I take a negative 1 from this binomial right here, it's going to make this negative b a positive b and make this positive 5 a negative 5. And I just switched them around. And now they can cancel. So now you can cancel those out. So our final answer is going to be AB over 5 plus B. What am I going to do with the negative 1? I'm going to put him on the outside. And you can leave him like a negative 1 with a set of parentheses and a 5 plus B in the denominator. That would be okay. But um, most of the time when we just have one negative, that means the whole fraction is negative. Um, and you just put the negative on the very, very outside.
So let's take a look at example three. So something different looks here to me. And I'm looking at the denominator. What do we notice about the denominator? He is backwards. So if I flip him around, he would be negative x squared plus 3x plus 28. And when we have a negative in the very, very front, we want our leading coefficient to be positive always. Um, I don't care if the 3x or the 28 are negative, but this negative x squared in the front, I want him to be positive. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor that negative 1 out. And when I do that, that's going to switch all my signs. Always do that first. So, if I factor this up top, trinomial, going to factor into two binomials, x and x, and what and what? How about negative 7, positive 2? And then if I factor this guy in the bottom, I'm going to leave the negative 1 on the outside, I'm going to factor the trinomial into two binomials. So this will be x and x. And how about negative 7, positive 4? I believe will work. So factor what we can. Cancel what we can. x minus 7 is cancel. And smush it all together. So our final answer will be x plus 2 over x plus 4. What are we going to do with the negative? We're going to put him out in front. Can you cancel these x's? That's my question to you. Can you cancel those x's? And I hope you're saying no, because these are protected in binomials. They're protected in a set of parentheses. You can't just go up to a binomial and start crossing out x's and the 2 and the 4 and simplifying that to 1 half. You can't do that, okay? Monomials with monomials, binomials with binomials. Okay, moving on along. All right, so now we're going to get into multiplying. So, multiplying, do you have to have common denominators to multiply and or divide? And I hope you're saying no. When do you have to have common denominators? You have to have common denominators when you add and subtract. And we'll get to that in our next lesson. So, when we multiply, you can just factor, cancel, Smush. It's just going to be slightly bigger than what you were doing earlier today. So, here we go. Factor what we can, cancel what we can, smush it all together. So, I think this first trinomial can factor. And I would love for you guys, you know, you guys are intrigued. You should know how to do this. This is a review. Hit the pause button. You do it. And then check it by me. Okay? Hit the pause button. You try it. And check it by me. So hopefully you're back with me. This will be x and x and minus 8 and plus 2. Hopefully I don't make a mistake. That's the one bad thing about recording is I'm doing these by myself and I'm talking and writing and doing this all at the same time. When I do it in front of a class, if I make a careless error, generally somebody in the class will correct me. Hopefully it'll be okay. All right. X minus 8 can't factor, so I'm just going to leave him. And we're going to factor this into plus 2 and plus 3. Okay. So cancel what we can. So how many X minus 8s can cancel? Well, you can cancel only one with one at a time. Okay, because x minus 8 divided by x minus 8 would be equal to 1. Okay, um, and 1 times anything is itself. But you, in this case, you can cancel this x minus 8 with this x minus 8. As long as you have 1 on top and 1 in the bottom. Okay, and then I can cancel x plus 2 and x plus 2. So here's my question. What's the answer? Is it just x plus 3? If you just write x plus 3, I'm going to count it wrong on your paper. Because where is the x plus 3? It's in the denominator. So, can't have a headless fraction. What's left up top? 
a 1. So your answer is going to be 1 over x plus 3. you got to make sure you have the 1. 1 divided by x plus 3. Okay. So if we move to example 5, what do we remember about division? We don't divide. We multiply by the reciprocal. So we are going to copy. Let me get a different color here. We're going to copy change it to multiplication and then we're going to flip the second fraction. We're going to take the reciprocal. So this should be, and these are supposed to be y's and x's. That's not a mistake. Okay, so then it becomes multiplication, so we're just going to factor, cancel, smush. So factor what you can, cancel what you can, smush it all together. Go ahead and hit the pause button, retry this, and then check it by me. So hopefully you've already done this. I'm going to go ahead and factor this, x and x. This is a difference of two squares, so plus 4 and minus 4. In the denominator, I'm going to take a GCF out. I can take out a 12. In the numerator over here, I'm going to factor it into minus 6 and plus 3. And in the denominator, x and x, and minus 8, minus 4. All right, cancel what we can. So we can cancel 1x minus 4 with 1x minus 4. We can cancel a y plus 3 and a y plus 3. And I think that's about it. So we're just going to smush it all together. So we have x plus 4 times y minus 6, all divided by 12 times x minus 8. Don't forget your GCF. That's very important. Very important. All right, so we did these in al Algebra 2. These are complex fractions, okay? Basically, it's a fraction within a fraction. Um, so I'm going to go ahead because this is trig. You could if you wanted to. If you wanted to, you could... Divide this out, a squared plus b squared over 4. Okay, but I'm going to tell you as you go into trig, that's not the way we want to do it anymore. Okay, you could then multiply by the reciprocal and copy, change, flip, and then simplify. But what we want to do is we want to go ahead and get you using the shortcut method. So the property says this, a over b over c over d equals, you multiply the very top with the very bottom, AD over the two middles, BC. That's what the property says. Okay, so if I multiply the top numerator and the very bottom denominator, and just write them with using parentheses. Don't try to like go ahead and distribute that out. I'm going to put a 4 on the outside and I'm going to put an a plus b in parentheses. Okay, then we're going to divide it by the two middles. So I'm going to put a 4 on the outside and an a squared plus b squared in the denominator. And then I'm going to try to factor cancel smush. So what can cancel? The 4's. Here's my question, a plus b over a squared plus b squared. Can a squared plus b squared factor? Why or why not? Like silly people would factor it into a plus b and a plus b and then cancel out one of the a plus b's. 
but you cannot do that. You cannot factor a sum of two squares. I hope you understand that. This guy right here is not factorable. Okay, and then the question is, is okay, well, can you just like cancel one of these and cancel one of those and have one over A? And you can't do that either, okay, because these are binomials. So your final answer has just got to be A plus B over A squared plus B squared. It is not going to work. I mean, you can try to factor it into A plus B times A plus B, but when you FOIL it out, it's not going to work. Okay, so that would be your final answer. And again, those complex fractions, I want you to go ahead and try using the shortcut. Okay, I taught you the shortcut in Algebra 2, but I did not make you use it. Now that you're in trig, you need to use it. Okay, you need to use it. All right, so as we move into trig, I want to go ahead and start introducing you to how we're going to use our algebra in trig. How are we going to move into using what we've learned using our trig functions, okay? And so this is the sine of x divided by the tangent of x. Please don't say sin. This is the sine of x divided by the tangent of x times the tangent of x over the sine of x. So you're going to treat it the same way using your algebra skills. You're going to factor, cancel, smush. Well, in this case, sine of x doesn't cancel, okay? Or it doesn't, sorry, excuse me, let me rephrase that. It doesn't factor, but you can cancel it. So you can cancel this tangent of x with this tangent of x, and you can cancel this sine of x with this sine of x. If everything cancels, what's our answer? Please don't say zero. Please don't say zero. Your answer is one, okay? Your answer is one. Okay. So let's look at this one. The tangent cubed x divided by the tangent of x. So here's my question. Can I just go up to it and take one of these out and cross one of those out? And the answer is yes. Why? Why can you cancel these? Because these are just monomials, okay? If they're just monomials, for example, I, here's how I want you to look at this. If you had x cubed over x, could you cancel that? Yes, you could. You could take one away from that, you could take that away from that, and you'd just be left with x squared, okay? So we're going to do, like, the same concept here. You can take one tangent away from this, leaving you with how many? Two. And you can take that one away from the bottom, so the answer is just going to be tangent squared x. Okay, so same concept, using your algebra skills, just moving into the idea of trig. And that's where we're going to end for today.